Hi guys, how are you? Hope you're all doing well. I am here with my favourites for 2013. Um, I have Bella here with me. She's decided to start grooming, so you may have her distracting you. Sorry about this. So I will start off with beauty, um, going with like my makeup routine and then going into um, nail polish, a bit of skincare, not too much. Uh, and then I might go into a bit of random stuff as well. Um, so let's start off with my favorite serum of the year and that is my Napoleon Purtis Autopilot uh, Napoleon Complex Skin Renewal Serum. I have done a review on this. It's sort of a comparison between this and another serum. I'll put the link below but basically can't say enough about it. Absolutely love it. Favourite moisturiser of the year is my Sukin Facial Moisturiser and I have been transferring it into this little bottle which was the original miniature that um, I received in a little bag so I could take it with me on holidays but I actually ran out of my full size one and this is all I've got left so it is the yeah, Sukin Facial Moisturiser smells amazing does an amazing job at moisturizing and yeah if you want me to do a full review of it yeah definitely let me know and I will do so for favorite primer I have completely run out because I only ever had my little um, samples and deluxe minis um, and that is the Napoleon Purtis autopilot primer so I will put in a picture telling you or showing you what that looks like basically I had that and one other primer my one step corrector from uh, Stila and the Napoleon hands down one favorite foundation of the year is my Rimmel match perfection and I have it in the shade 100 and I like to use it with my real technique stippling brush um, just I find it a lot easier to work with with that and get an more even coverage I like that they've put the pump on it because it never used to um, it does have SPF 18 yes SPF 18 it is a light reflecting or something like that foundation and I find it quite good for the BB cream or tinted moisturizer category I decided to go with the Garnier Miracle Skin Perfector they call it a BB cream I would rather call it a tinted moisturizer they promise that it will do all the amazing things that a BB cream does conceal cover moisturize sun protect all of that I don't think it does it but I still find it okay I think as a tinted moisturizer and I prefer this over the Nude by Nature tinted moisturizer that I have as well. Um, concealer, uh, I have decided to pick the new one for the year and that is the Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circles by Maybelline. Um, I started off the year with a completely different concealer and this one was my new discovery for this year and I have this in the shade Fair and I use this both under my eyes and on spots and absolutely love it. Sorry I'm sort of going a bit fast I don't want to go into anything too much um, like detail wise just because I want to get through as much as possible and I don't want you to have to sit through a video that goes for an hour. So I'm trying to speed things up without having to rush for powder I have two favorites for a tinted powder so that one that gives me more coverage I've chosen my nude by nature natural mineral cover and this is the one specifically for light skin tones um, it's one of those ones that has the um, sieve at the top and um, I'll try and get some out to give you a bit of an idea of the coverage obviously I don't wear it that thick but I usually just use my um, powder brush or the nude by nature brush that it came with and I will dust that over my face for any extra coverage 
for a translucent powder I'm not going to take it out of well, maybe I can take it out of the packaging very carefully because this broke um, it shattered when I went on the plane this is my Laura Mercier translucent translucent pressed setting powder um, I'll try and get some out to show you the consistency without it going everywhere so it is a white powder you can see there I put it on quite thick but then you can shear it out and I like that uh, powder because it doesn't cake on and it's not one of those ones that is super light reflecting so if you're going to have a photo taken it won't come up as white um, yet yeah, if you put it on under your eyes it doesn't settle and yeah I think that it's great for blush I have chosen another Australian brand and it is Lime Lily Cosmetics this is a cream blush um, I originally had this one which is in the shade Princess I got this from a Lust Habit box um, so it's a very pretty pink which looks like that and I liked the consistency and the staying power of it so much that when I went to iMats in September I bought a second crane blush in the shade Naked so sorry for the, sh the flash or what do you call it the reflection that's the color there I'm wearing a tiny bit on my cheeks right now not too much that's it there they stay on quite well they are good both by themselves and to have powder layered on top so I think they are good for both I am wearing it with powder on top so sorry my brain is just not focusing at the moment I have got some powder on top but you can definitely wear it by itself now onto eyes. Favourite uh, eyeshadow primer is the Lime Chrome Eyeshadow Helper. Um, a little goes a long way with this. You just have to put the tiniest amount on and it comes out the skin colour. And then you rub it in. And that'll help any eyeshadow that goes on stay and it won't crease and it'll help the staying power. Favourite cream eyeshadows definitely go to the Maybelline color tattoos um, I chose barely branded as my favorite color this was from the metal collection um, I just find it the most versatile I guess because it's sort of a skin tone but a bit more shimmery but then I also like um, Tough as Taupe and Audacious Asphalt as well if you're going for a more neutral and then if you're wanting a pop of colour then you've got the um, turquoise, you've got the teal, um, teal sorry, you've got the emerald, edgy emerald and then if you're wanting something else like the metallics you've got the bold gold and then you've got the silver strike from the metal as well. Next up, with the single eyeshadows, I decided to choose Trench Coat by Napoleon Purtis. This can be um, used both as an all over lid colour or as a crease colour. And it's also good if you're wanting to use um, something for a, um, a contour colour that isn't super orange bronze. Um, I've used it as a contour colour and I think it's quite nice. My favourite eyeshadow palette of the year has to be the Nude palette from the Balm. Um, this is the one that I pretty much go to all the time. It has a good mix of mattes, shimmers and satins um, just to pick some random colours to swatch. There's four colours there are four colors there I barely touch them as well um, they're really good quality very easy to blend 
you hardly have to put any product on your brush and you get a lot of pigmentation. Um, it is a bit on the pricey side, but it's definitely worth it. Um, there's nothing much more I can say about the Balm Shadows. I love all of the palettes that I've got from the Balm and I'm hoping to get the Balm Voyage and the um, Meat Matte. Uh, yeah, Meat Matte. Is it the Meat Matte Nude? No. Meat Matte whatever it's called, putting it down there at some stage. Um, I'm hoping to get them at some stage. For eyebrows, I haven't really used a lot of eyebrow products, mainly because I don't tend to use a lot other than when I'm doing tutorials. Um, so I decided not to put any, or yeah, I decided not to put any in this favourites. So going on to eyeliners, favourite eyeliner pencil has been my Natio Long Lasting Eyeliner Pencil and it's just in black and it's one of the uh, automatic type pencils. It just looks like that. I've used it in uh, plenty of tutorials. It has the built-in smudger and sharpener in there as well. I've also been loving for my waterline, I've been loving the Rimmel Scandalize Waterproof Cole Kajal, and this is in Nude. Um, I've also got the Taupe and the Silver, but that's the Nude there. I haven't used the Taupe and Silver yet, but the Nude I've used quite a few times. And then um, Liquid Liner I don't use um, a lot because basically I'm not very good at using liquid liner. So on to gel liner and I've got the Napoleon Purtis China Doll uh, gel liner in Equinox which is black and I have used this quite a lot and it still doesn't look like I've used much. I've basically used maybe a quarter of it and it still hasn't dried out so um, I'm still very happy with it and I like to use my I think I use an angled brush from Manicare with my Napoleon, yeah with this one um, and I always like to store it upside down so it doesn't dry out. For mascara it's been quite tough but I decided to go with their Real by Benefit and it's been tough just because I only have this little deluxe miniature and it's almost run out but basically it does give the illusion of you having um, false lashes. It has this little ball at the top of the um, wand that you can turn up like that and push into your lashes. Um, really good idea, I really love it and if it wasn't so expensive, I think it's like $35 which is ridiculous for a mascara but if it wasn't so expensive I would definitely buy myself one, a full size one, but for now I'm just going to use that one up and I've got plenty of mascaras that I've got waiting to be used up, but yeah once I use that up I think that'll be it. Um, on to lips, my favourite lip balm is, yeah finished, it is from One Skin Solution and it is my vanilla, vanilla lip balm and I'll put a picture in here. Basically it is full of good ingredients and smells amazing, tastes really good and um, I got this from a Lust Have It box as well and yeah I it turned into my favorite lip balm and I definitely have to get myself another one very very soon although I'm not sure if I'll stick with the vanilla or if I'll change to the mojito or if I'll splurge and buy one of the tinted ones or maybe I'll get both a tinted and one of the regular ones I don't know anyway let's move on to uh, lip liner and I've got a lip liner from Napoleon Purtis and this is the lip liner pencil in uh, hot pink and it is a super bright pink. So that's the colour of hot pink there. 
it's not one of those hard pencils it's quite soft easy to fill in your lips easy to line your lips you're not going to stab yourself with it um, I just wish it wasn't so expensive because I would definitely get a lot more of the colors favorite lipstick of the year um, I've decided to go by formula rather than color Revlon lip butters um, and I think my most used was definitely the one in cherry tart which is that one there the formulation is halfway between a lip balm and a lipstick I've done a full review here on my channel I'll put the link once again down below my favorite lip gloss of the year is one from Illamasqua and it is the intense lip gloss in the color boost and yeah I'd never tried any Illamasqua products before going to the Illamasqua counter in Sydney in September but yeah I tried a few things and bought a few things but this yeah this lip gloss is pretty darn amazing Unfortunately, it's not getting the true color there, but it is a purple with blue duochrome and it smells amazing, it looks amazing, and it looks really good on top of the lipstick that I bought as well, which is a good question. I'll write the name of the lipstick down below. Um, I think it's Atomic, I don't remember, but um, yeah, it smells amazing, looks amazing on absolutely loved it and the girls at the Lamasca counter were really helpful um, with me being an absolute newbie to um, the Lamasca line of products so yeah I have to say that I've only worn it a couple of times because it's quite scary to look at but absolutely loved it when I've worn it so um, not sticky at all absolutely love it now when it comes to brushes I haven't got a favorite brush but I've got a favorite brush brand and that's Real Techniques. Real Techniques by Samantha Chapman. All of the brushes that I own from that brand are amazing. Um, I pretty much there are some of my brushes now that of the other brands that I own that I just want to throw out and not want to use and if I had the money I would just keep buying Real Techniques brushes but I don't so I have to keep the other ones but Real Techniques brushes are really awesome if you are interested in trying um, some Real Techniques brushes, I have a link down below to um, iHerb and that's where I bought all of my Real Techniques brushes and I have a link down there that you can get, uh, I think it's $10 off your first purchase if it's over $40 and $5 off your purchase if it's under $40. So if you've never shopped from iHerb and you'd like to try Real Techniques brushes, um, and they also sell um, e.l.f. I think, um, Bedellium Tools, Physician's Formula, there's a few other things that they sell as well. Um, check the link down below and you'll be able to save some money there. Now onto nail polish and I decided not to choose again a favourite colour. I went with a favourite nail polish brand and I chose Sally Hansen. Um, at the beginning of the year I probably would have said OPI but Sally Hansen pretty much took over by about I don't know April May just because I tried all the different ranges in the Sally Hansen company and absolutely fell in love um, some of my favorites are this one which is cyber from the HD um, collection and I also have another one which is called Digital, which is a bright pink. I also have this one from the Luster Shine collection, and it's in the colour Scarab, which I absolutely love. It's coming up more green on the screen, but um, it's definitely a lot of blues as well. And then I've absolutely been loving the Complete Salon Manicure um, line, and I was fortunate enough to win a whole lot of... Uh, nail polishes from that line which um, I showed in my December haul well, which I will show in my December haul which will be coming up very soon I think it'll be the next video I think so um, but one of my favorites um, from the ones that I've bought myself is this one called Get Juiced and it is 
very much a juicy pink. I think that's the best way to call it, juicy pink. Now so. on to some sort of skincare and other stuff, other beauty stuff. Um, my favourite soap was definitely Honey I Wash the Kids by Lush. Um, I'm almost finished my little bar of it. It's still in the shower. I'm not taking it out because it's literally this big and not worth looking at. But I will put a picture in here. And I've also got a review of it on my blog. So I'll put a link to that in the description box. Shampoo this year, I tried so many because my hair is pretty disgusting and it's not making up its mind as to whether it's dry, oily, sensitive, whatever. Um, plus I also coloured my hair this year so I tried another shampoo when I dyed my hair. So I have no favourite shampoo or conditioner for this year just because I didn't particularly like any of the ones that I tried this year. So for facial cleanser, um, my favourite this year has been the Sukin Sensitive Cleansing Gel and again I'm not taking that out of the shower because it's soaking wet and I don't particularly want drops of water everywhere in my bedroom and all over my desk and things like that. But picture will go here. My favourite body lotion or body butter has been the pink grapefruit body butter from the body shop and I literally ran out. Um, I used the last of it up the other night and yeah it's pretty darn amazing smelling and it's really really moisturising. Um, at the moment I'm using this moisturiser which I was given for my birthday either last year or the year before but I just never opened it until um, the morning after I finished using the yeah the pink grapefruit one it's this one here it's the Dove body lotion hydro nourishment um, I'm really liking this so um, at the moment I'm liking it it just doesn't smell as nice as the pink grapefruit body butter my favourite uh, facial cleansing wipes or makeup removal wipes um, have been the Swispers Cucumber Facial Cleansing Wipes. These ones have aloe vera and vitamin E and these ones um, are good for all skin types so they've been really good for um, my sensitive skin. And I find that they've been quite good for taking off waterproof makeup as well um, and they're good for using on your eyes as well. So. I'm almost out of these, I think I've got about five left and then I've got a packet of, I think I've got aloe ones in there which are good for sensitive skin as well in the cupboard so I will try them out as well. On to perfume and the, well my favourite new release fragrance for 2013 was by Estee Lauder and it is Modern Muse. I've only got this sample and I think it is absolutely pretty and I just noticed that my light went out. <sighs> that sucks. Anyway, I'm gonna have to replace the light globe. Ah, that's the worst. Anyway, it's a beautiful um, floral fragrance that's not what you expect to be like in super old lady fragrance like a lot of people think that florals equal older ladies but this one's a very modern floral um, I would definitely recommend this for um, if you're dressing up for a special occasion um, even a wedding things like that um, I would definitely recommend Modern Muse um, if you'd like a review of this let me know I think I'm gonna do one very soon anyway and I've also um, Another good one that was good was the new Elizabeth Arden fragrance, which I don't remember what it was called, but I'll put it down here and I'll do a review of that very soon as well. So it turns out that when I had left the room, someone had turned my light off. Anyway, um, on to fragrances or 
a fragrance that I kept reaching for this year um, there actually wasn't one I pretty much was trying a lot of different fragrances um, especially once I stopped working I was trying a lot of different fragrances um, especially in my little samples um, I basically wore a lot of samples this year so there wasn't particularly one fragrance that I was reaching for over and over again got two favorite random beauty discoveries this year one is the Benjabel brush tree and mine's all packed away and it's up high so I couldn't really get it down but putting a picture in here I bought mine at IMATS this year and it seriously saved me from having to lie all of mine down on the table like all of my brushes down on the table and waiting for them to dry forever um, and taking up a whole lot of room while they were drying um, it is a really good invention and I think I may have to get another one at IMATS next year maybe a little one my other um, really good random find was Australian Indian nail polishes and I have been really loving the indie nail polishes that I've been trying um, I thought I'd bring a couple out to show you this one here is sour candy by gloss and sparkle this here is secret garden like by glam polish this is actually the old packaging and then this one here is Suspended Starlight, and this is by Femme Fatale. And I'm also wearing one on my nails right now, although it's starting to get a bit chipped. On my nails right now, if I can get it to focus, let me just put these down. I've got, um, I've got a Rimmel nail polish on underneath, but over the top I've got gloss and sparkle queen of hearts that one unfortunately is being discontinued as far as I can tell but it's got black and white and red glitter and then it's also got some red love hearts which and sure. here in Oz and I think sometimes they do it inter internationally there is a subscription box called what's indie box and they do a monthly subscription box and it's based on a theme and uh, you get five uh, nail polishes that are limited editions made ex especially for that box um, based on the theme and in November the theme was rock and roll and so we got five nail polishes based on um, rock and roll bands so I got well we all got uh, nothing else matters based on Metallica purple haze actually I'll show you this is purple haze this is by Peter's polish so this is based on Jimi Hendrix this is my blue suede shoes by Bella Bell obviously based on Elvis Presley this is nothing else matters based on Metallica this is Riders on the Storm based on the doors and this is Bed of Roses based on Bon Jovi so that's from What's Indie Box um, and so yeah I've actually I've loved all of the um, indie nail polishes that I've bought and tried in the past few months and I am very much looking forward to buying and trying more this year now on to my random favorites TV shows I've been loving Criminal Minds and also Doctor Who um, Matt Smith said his goodbyes as the Doctor in 2013 which was extremely sad but uh, I think we're all looking forward to seeing what Peter Capaldi does as the Doctor next year um, movie wise I didn't see too many movies 
um, or new release ones. Um, I went and saw Thor 2 and I thought that was pretty good and then not too long ago I saw Now You See Me on DVD and I thought that was pretty good and then I went and saw Day of the Doctor at the movies in 3D and thought that was amazing. Music wise I actually didn't buy too many new release albums. I bought uh, Justin Timberlake's 2020 Experience. It was okay. Nothing super spectacular. Musically it was amazing but I don't think it's something that I could listen to as a whole over and over again. And then also released this, well in 2013 was Hanson's new album Anthem which was amazing. I got to see them live in September 2012 and they were fantastic. Um, insert photos here. Yes, that is me with Hanson. I got to meet them as well, so yay! Music that I couldn't stop playing this year, uh, obviously Hanson. Um, they're my favourite band, so obviously I can't stop playing them. Um, but musically they're amazing. Don't just think that Mbop is the only thing they did, they've done a lot more since then. Um, also on rotation has been Queen, um, The Beatles and also Madness. Um, and then I've got an 80s playlist that has been getting a lot of play very recently. I've got about 400 and something songs um, just in that playlist going, yeah, pretty frequently. Bookwise, I didn't read too many books, but one that I read at the or end of 2012 and then finished early last year, 2013, was called um, Brood of Bones by A. E. Marling and that was a really good book. It's a fantasy um, and I will leave a link to the Goodreads page to that book down below so you can see all about it. I'm not going to tell you the synopsis or anything because it's all there so I'll just leave it down below. And finally something extremely random which I got from my parents as an early Christmas present that they bought for me on the day we went to see the Day of the Doctor. They bought me the Journal of Impossible Things and a sonic screwdriver which is actually a pen. And this comes out of the episode where the Doctor becomes a human and he writes himself a journal and you open it up and it's actually John Smith's journal. So it has all this stuff in there that he sees in his dream. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And then it has some fa pages for you to fill out. And then, yeah. So that is it for my favorites for 2013. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope it wasn't too long for you. And yeah, that's it. I hope to see you very soon. So until then, take care. Bye.